yeah so uh, we will wait for two minutes more and then i will start So hello everyone, uh, today I will be doing two hands-on uh, uh, and other are some videos. So I will introduce myself, I am Anjali Negi, uh, I am currently a PhD student in IIT Kanpur. So I think uh, we should start. Yeah, so I am audible, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's start now. Yes. So, uh, this is gate 2013 question, uh, chemistry, for question number 13. So, this particular question states that the catalyst and the co-catalyst used in the wake-up process respectively are so ma'am slide is not visible um is it the same case for gunasli too because i can see my slides in my other computer okay so i am sharing my screen so can you see that No, ma'am. Okay. Do stop sharing. Now. Is there any question on slide? Uh, yeah, I am presenting. Uh, it's gate 2013 question. Yes, ma'am, but I'm not able to see it. It's coming like screen broadcast. Oh, okay. So I think uh, there is a lag. So because if you are seeing the seeing broadcast, so that uh, was just some seconds ago. So I think there is a lag between us. So should I join again? I don't know your internet. Uh, your voice is uh, very clear. So I think you should not go back. You can uh, join again also. I will wait. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for Gunasli it is visible. Okay.
ओके ओके सो वेन एवर इफ इफ माई ऑडियो इज नॉट क्लियर और स्क्रीन इज नॉट विजिबल टू यू यू बोथ कैन आंसर ओके स्टॉप मी इन बिटवीन यू सो दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन वॉज फ्रॉम गेट इज फ्रॉम गेट ट्वेंटी थर्टीन केमिस्ट्री क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टीन दिस क्वेश्चन स्टेट दैट द कैटलिस्ट एंड द को कैटलिस्ट यूज इन द वेक ऑफ प्रोसेस रेस्पेक्टिवली आर so we are given with four options and uh, yes in uh, i think if you guys have just gone through a wake up process or anything uh, in uh, while you were studying so you might if you have a, an idea then it um, uh, you can uh, just get confused between because all the four option contain copper and all the four option contain palladium correct but the correct option uh, will be we will find out so i'll just go back yes so basically wake up process is a oxidation process and it is used for the oxidation of terminal alkenes okay uh, al yeah alkenes so we will just write it down that the process of oxidation of terminal alkenes to uh, so the oxidation of alkene will uh, make them convert into either aldehyde or ketones okay aldehyde and ketones now by using palladium and copper compounds as catalyst still uh we don't know the exact one so in the next i will tell so this is what uh, is a wake up process is this is what we call the wake up process okay now this palladium and the copper compound which are used as catalyst are actually palladium with oxidation to okay chloride uh i will just make it short note for you so this is pd uh wait a minute it's not that clear wait a minute so yeah it's pd cl2 basically but so so this is insoluble and uh, the process is uh, 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 using solvent water so uh, basically we have chloride ion in our solution and uh, so it will be giving me pd cl uh, 4 s i think what was the oxidation state there in our question itself you can just check here two negative yeah i think the screen sharing is off right can you see my screen no ma'am okay yes so this is the correct option okay uh, in the case of palladium chloride because this is one the soluble in water and the number 2 number 2 is the copper 2 chloride 
uh, so these two um, are used are used in this process along with along with the oxygen and water now uh, for example so in the problem itself they have not given any example or not have asked any mechanism but simply we can just have one example and look into the catalyst they have used which we already did so for example we can take ethene simple alkene okay and copper cl2 so always uh, see that this pdcl2 if you have just not uh, simply noted that this pdcl2 is actually insoluble in water and the actual uh, catalyst is the pdcl4 2 negative when it uh, when the cl negative uh, just add up to it and uh, it makes and the complex that that is um, um, uh, that is there is the pdcl4 2 negative which is participating in the uh, further mechanism so that is the main point here to note because that one is the soluble in water as our reaction is in water itself so this will do the oxidation of alkene and we will get uh, this is as an aldehyde here okay so going back yeah so this was the waker process now getting back to our problem yes so as you have just seen now so the correct option must be the option number d uh, so also there is a okay uh, in option number b and d i can see that uh, the respectively they have used this word respectively so the first catalyst is the in the mechanism which is use is the pdcl4 2 negative and then later cucl2 so the uh, so the respectively word is very important here and you have to check that b and d are all, all, all same option with same uh, catalyst but only the order are different so look into that also yes so the correct option is d so so let's move into another problem so any doubt here okay okay so our next uh, problem is the one so this came in gate 2013 this is question number 17 and this question state that the maximum number of stereo isomers possible for the compound given below is so um, so as i have not recorded this in the video so i am having a little advantage here to ask you directly uh, whether you can answer me correctly or not so any any of you can just type in your chat box that uh, the maximum number of slide is paused so can you see the uh, question i'm seeing question number 13 only previous one okay so there is a internet lag between both of us so I think others can see, right? Okay, I will join again. Okay. Yeah, so others, uh, Amruta and Gunasli, you both can answer on your paper or you can just write down the answer if you already know on the chat box, in the chat box and I will solve it then. Oh, hello. Yeah. Good evening, ma'am. Yeah, good evening. Uh, ma'am, uh, I would like to clarify that I am not a student. Uh, okay. I am from NPTEL. I am here to monitor this session. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. 
Yeah, sorry. No, 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 I don't wish. Okay. Okay, so Gunasli or Shika. Shika, you can see the uh, problem, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. So, the maximum number of stereo isomers possible. Don't worry if you don't know the uh, basic or uh, any, it's not a problem. We will just quickly go through it and we will find out the correct answer for this particular uh, compound or molecule. But uh, if you already have uh, some basics and you already have solved these kind of problem then you can just type in the chat box Okay, I am getting some answers now. So, I will start solving it, okay? Then I will discuss the answer later. So, uh, yes. Let's go back. And uh, so, I think you can just see my white sheet, whiteboard. So, I will start. So, yes. So talking about stereo isomers, first we should know some uh, basic keywords or terms. So the first term that uh, we encounter is the chiral word. So basically this chiral word is uh, from Greek. Uh, so it's a Greek word and uh, it just simply means that it is uh, the meaning of it is not, not super, super impossible. Okay. It means not super impossible. Yeah. Super impossible to what? Super impossible to its mirror image. Okay. So the basic example that we an, uh, read in a textbook while we are getting introduced to this concept is the uh, is our hand. So our hand are mirror images of each other and they are non super impossible. Hence we see that this is the example of a chiral or chirality. Okay. So when we when I talk about simply chiral molecule or when I talk about chiral atom or atoms okay so what we see here that uh, when i say chiral molecule it means that it is not superimposable on the mirror image of its molecule on mirror image of its molecule when i am talking about the chiral atom or chiral atoms then i am saying that it is so usually um, this stereo isomers and this chirality concept is usually we apply on the organic molecule they have the backbone element as carbon so usually there are uh, usually are carbon atoms correct or atom bonded to four different groups yes so this is number one word or keyword that we should get introduced to ourselves and the second one is the uh, uh, stereoisomers okay so basically what are stereoisomers so when i'm saying so there are various kind of isomers so isomers meaning they have uh, iso means same 
and whether they have the same for chemical formula but different structure or whether they have same um, uh, same chemical formula but uh, yeah so isomer uh, can be variety of type but when i am saying that this word stereo isomers so that means that the isomers that only differ in the three dimensional arrangement of atoms yes so um, we will uh, i will give you some example also and in the end we will solve the problem that we have so um, yeah basically you can just take one simple example of your uh, tetrahedral uh, uh, ch4 uh, uh, kind of molecule where you can uh, be, to make it stereo isomer you can just simply uh, change all the groups and make your car this carbon as chiral atom so let's say it have group a b c and d now uh, th this is very lame representation of my uh, uh, tetrahedral molecule but instead of this what i can do i can just give it a 3d representation where my a and b are in, are on the same plane and my d and c are uh, so d is uh, say um, above the plane and c is uh, below the plane okay so that's how this uh, the 3d of this molecule a 3d representation of this particular uh, chiral molecule we can say uh, we can demonstrate in 3d space now this particular uh, uh, molecule having a chiral center is actually it does have a stereo isomers because it does have uh, four different group and uh, one uh, the carbon is chiral atom and hence uh, you, i think you guys know that uh, it contains stereo isomers which are called r and s respectively to the weightage of the group and the uh, how we uh, differentiate between them okay now the sec uh, other two keywords that we should know is number one is the enantiomers so first one is enantiomer so enantiomer is stereo isomers that are non super impossible impossible mirror images okay and the second one is the diastereomers so this diastereomer is the stereo isomers that are non but uh, okay yeah so that are non super impossible the other other thing is they are non mirror so they are non mirror images and uh, so basically there will be some opposite configuration at some chiral center so but in the case of enantiomers uh, they have opposite configuration at all chiral center yeah so 
just to get it into your head we should i should i think give you just one simple example so say we have um, wait a minute yeah this is some bromine chlorine okay just don't bother about uh, how the all bulky group are about the plane just uh, for our understanding we are doing this yes so this is say one two three and this one is the fourth one now if i ask you which one of them are pairs of enantiomers and which one of them are the pairs of diastereomers so um so if you look into the first and the second one so we know that uh, okay so this is a chiral center this is a chiral center so they do have uh, uh, stereo isomers okay so the first one first one and the second one if i try to make them pair so the first one and the second one are yeah so if i just okay just imagine when you are looking into this just imagine that you place a mirror here and this mirror will reflect the molecule such that this bromine which is right now above the plane it will be uh, below correct yeah so the mirror image of this one will be uh, op, uh, a molecule 2 correct so the mirror image is uh, so one and two are mirror images of each other and uh, if i and they are they both if i uh, just put this molecule over the uh, second one over the second one so they they both will be non super impossible that's why they both are uh, enantiomers okay now number 2 and number 3 so when i look into number 2 and number 3 um they are if i just place one mirror here just let's see placing one mirror here this bromine which is above uh, or below it will definitely reflect but this chlorine if it is below it, it should must have gone above correct so they are not mirror images correct and since they are not mirror images let's just try to superimpose them so while trying these two can uh, get overlap but these two cannot so they are definitely no non mirror images and they are non super impossible that that is why they are di stereomers this two and three and for third and fourth i will just uh, tell you guys that that they those two are enantiomers and you can just do it again by reflecting the third one or by reflecting the fourth one and you will find out that the both are again mirror images and uh, yeah they are super impossible too non super impossible sorry so that's it and uh, there is again one note about meso compounds so i will just uh, draw one example here quickly that uh, so this is one group bromine say there is one hydrogen there bromine hydrogen now if i say that uh, okay so this carbon is a chiral this carbon again is a chiral having four different groups four different groups so i have two chiral carbons in my molecule but still they are not optically active because uh, the reason is 
द मिरर इमेज वट एवर इट विल शो और हैव दे बोथ आर सुपर इम्पॉसिबल एंड आर एक्चुअली द सेम मॉलिक्यूल द एक्चुअल रीजन बिहाइंड इज बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेजेंट ऑफ द प्लेन ऑफ सिमेट्री ओके सो द बिकॉज ऑफ द प्लेन ऑफ सिमेट्री इफ यू ट्राई टू ड्रॉ अ मिरर इमेज ऑफ दिस मॉलिक्यूल सो यू विल फाइंड आउट दिस बोथ आर सेम एंड सुपर इम्पॉसिबल on its mirror image because uh, at one one glance if you see but uh, what happen is that at one glance if you see and then if you just simply rotate it and then superimpose it will get superimpose because of because it they have plane of symmetry okay so i think it is clear uh, and let's get back to a problem so this particular molecule that we have uh, okay so there is another concept also which is very important before we solve the problem is the stereochemistry of uh, biphenyls okay so biphenyls when i am talking about them so basically any biphenyl if i just draw it here so there is a sigma bond here which is used or which is here and uh, the uh, these two planar rings are freely rotating when there are no restriction present and when they are freely rotating then what happen they are uh, optically not active or uh they don't have any stereo isomers correct but in the case in case when they have some substitution or some restriction so that the ring are perpendicular to each other or uh, are restricted to rotate then what happen then for example say you have okay so this particular uh, case of biphenyl will show stereo isomers and will be optically active so the point that i should note down is that uh, there should be substitution on the ortho positions uh whether it is a substitution in the ortho position or in the case just i will just uh, or in case some bridging ligand is present something which is restricting the rotation of the two biphenyls of the two phenyls okay so that you can see and the other second option is that on the same ring the ortho positions that are substituted must be different okay so the substitution and this is again uh, because of the symmetry element so we don't want uh, even if the chiral carbon or chiral atom is present there we still don't want the plane or symmetry uh, or improper axis of symmetry present in our molecule if because in that particular case what happen is that that um, it again reflects some meso kind of thing and then it will get superimposed and it uh, uh, get optically inactive because of that because of the symmetry present but so because of that we don't want so hence we uh, i am writing down the point that the substitution uh, on the ortho positions of same ring i am talking about must be different okay yes 
so this is there and finally uh, in the case of large substituents in that ortho position uh, so they will what what will what the substitution do they will interfere uh, mechanically uh, to do, to behave as the obstacles and restrict the free rotation that was present initially this these two benzene ring will become perpendicular to each other okay and hence this molecule overall become chiral and uh, the mirror image of this particular molecule now will not be super impossible thus it will show a optical activity okay so keeping this in mind i think now we are good to solve our problem yes so now this is one i am just trying to make it as a perpendicular portion yeah so this is no2 okay so you can see that this particular biphenyl uh so this particular biphenyl group is a chiral molecule or simply we can say it have a uh, stereo isomers because of the stereo chemistry of biphenyl as we have just seen so we have a uh, stereo isomers from here so they will have a total of 2 correct and the other group that are, that is actually present here that is the bulky group we just see that there is one stereo sorry uh, chiral carbon present which is this carbon this carbon having one methyl here and other bulky group here or oh, sorry other group here and this group is again different and we have one hydrogen there okay so overall this is a overall this is a chiral carbon there so another because of this another chiral carbon we will have other two stereo isomers correct and overall we will have total number 4 as the stereo isomers present in this compound so um, any doubt so i think we can proceed forward it's it's okay right yeah so we will jump to our next problem now we still have time left so let's just see mm mm i think Hello everyone. In this video, I will be solving the 2016 chemistry question number three. It states that the among the following, the most stable isotope to radioactive decay is. So we are given with four different option of lead, where uh, the atomic mass is varying. So we need to find out the most stable isotope among them. So before I go. Uh, through the question let's go through some basic here uh, the theory of radioactivity it states that the nucleus which n upon p ratio lies outside the belt are unstable and therefore 
and therefore they undergo spontaneous radioactive disintegration. The nuclei with n upon p ratio lying above or below the belt are unstable. So they undergo radioactive disintegration giving out alpha or beta particle in such a manner as will they will yield some stability or stable nuclei. So we can consider case number one where uh, the n upon p ratio so the n upon p ratio uh, lie above the region of stability this means that the nucleus contain too many neutrons if it is above the uh, if, if it is above the stability region okay so it will uh, emit a beta particle uh, or we can say an electron in the way that a neutron changes into a proton and the n upon p ratio get lowered and come closer to the region of the stability okay so this is the plot where number of neutron is denoted as capital n number of proton as capital p and the belt here is the belt containing stable nuclei and the elements that is above or below are show the show radioactivity here okay for example this is the disintegration of isotope of carbon this is just an uh, uh, example of the case one where 14 c6 carbon is uh, disintegrated as uh, it uh, and shows a beta, uh, beta emission and it get converted into nitrogen with mass number 14 so 14 and 7 so the n upon p ratio falls from 8 by 6 to 7 by 7 and it gets uh, closer to the stability belt where uh, uh, the ratio uh, get convert from 1.33 to 1. And the case number two, you can consider where my N upon P ratio lie below the belt, the stability belt, and the, evidently the nucleus contain excess of proton here. So it will disintegrate in such a way that the new nucleus has a high value of N upon P and therefore, that it can go, uh, it can come closer to the belt. This happens when by the emission of an alpha particle that is a helium nucleus. So it as a result that the new nucleus has lower charge and lower mass. So the unstable. Okay. So the unstable, so the unstable nuclei uh, continue to emit alpha or beta particle until a stable arrangement is reached. Now, the tip here is that the n upon p of uh, n upon p is equal to one is for the element number up to twenty, and the n upon p between one to one point six will be stated as the stable nuclear nuclei or nucleus uh, so we can say for that the n upon p ratio lying between 1.6 uh, and greater than 1.6 and less than 1 are stated as unstable so for the given question we are given with the four different isotopes and uh, I have written here the ratio corresponding to them. So the n upon, so the n upon p ratio is for two zero six uh, lead eighty two will be uh, one twenty four upon eighty two. That will be one point five one. And similarly, if you calculate uh, n uh, n upon p ratio for all of them, you will get to know that the most closer to n upon uh, to one. So what we need to uh, we need to check that the n upon p ratio of uh, given isotope should be more closer to uh, or in between one to one point six. They are actually in between one to one point six, but the more closer to one will be the most stable one. So here you can see that the uh, more closer to one isotope is the first one. Okay. So, uh, among the following, the most stable isotope to radioactive decay will be option number 
A. And I will uh, refer you to go through the uh, book uh, Principle of Physical Chemistry by Puri Sharma Pathania, edition 2001. And the NPTEL reference is the lecture number 24, Radioactivity Alpha Decay by Professor H. C. Verma, Department of Physics, IIT, Kanpur. Uh, I have attached the link. Thank you. So, uh, there are two more small uh, problems that we can just simply play. We still have time. Okay. Yeah. I will be solving gate 2015 chemistry question number 26. This question stated which one of the following statement is correct? We are given with four different options. So before moving to the option, let's discuss some basic. Now, the defects in solid are any irregularity in the pattern of crystal arrangements in solid. And this is called imperfection in solid or defects in solid. The crystal defect occurs as point along line or in the form of a surface and they have been classified as point defect and line defects. So we are focusing on point defect. So the point defect are the imperfection in the crystal that is due to the dislocation of a particle from one position to another position in the lattice. So this is a this is for our understanding. So the types of point defect can be classified into stoichiometric defect, non-stoichiometric, and one impurity defect. So our main focus is on stoichiometric defect. So this defect uh, is uh, also called intrinsic defect or our thermodynamic defect. Uh, because in stoichiometric defect, the proportion of the elements in the solid is not uh, disturbed. So this defect arises when there is some vacancy in the crystal lattice or when some uh, uh, constituent particle move from their original site and occupy the inter interstitial sites. So the stoichiometric defect have been observed uh, both as you can see in non-ionic solid and in ionic solid. Okay. So again this stoichiometric defect in ionic solid, we, it is uh, uh, classified in two different um, defects, which is one Scott key, other one is Frankel defect. So to simply understand this, so in Scott key defect, uh, uh, it is the defect in the crystal is observed when, uh, so you can see this is a representation of uh, lattice okay so this is a two-dimensional lattice where my uh, cation are present in uh, orange dots and my anions in negative uh, blue okay so this is the arrangement of uh, 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 arrangement in uh, two-dimensional lattice of a ionic solid so if i go through this demonstration so to understand scott key defect uh, this uh, this defect uh, is also known as the point defect and why is so because we observe when an equal number of cation and anion means both are missing from the lattice lattice point okay so the uh, presence of the scott key defect does not change the stoichiometry of the crystal this has to be noted because uh, at the same time the ratio of uh, cation and anion is being neutral so it is not affecting the stoichiometry of the crystal but uh, what it will affect, it will affect the density of the overall crystal, okay? So the presence of this defect lowers the density of the solid. So uh, if this is my crystal, so after the defect, after the defect, say this and this, 
one cation and one anion is missing from the lattice bond. Okay. okay. So overall, uh, the density of the uh, lattice will decrease. Okay. Now to understand the Frankel defect. So Frankel is again simply uh, uh, in any crystal when ion leaves its regular site. Okay, when ion leaves its regular site and occupy an interstitial site here, it is now the ion is not leaving the whole crystal, but it is occupying the interstitial site. So this defect is termed as the Frankel defect. The only difference between Frankel and Schottky is that the density of the uh, density in the Frankel defect it remains constant, as my anion or my ion are actually not leaving the whole crystal, but uh, this the small size cation will move to the inter inter interstitial site okay or space so this defect will look like say this cation has moved and moved to say anywhere in between here okay or here okay so this is the Frankel defect so simply you can see the example for Scott key defect are NACL or KFC Frankel defect it is EGCL or EGPR again the point to be noted here that in Frankel defect uh, the uh, size of the cation should be much smaller than uh, anion usually it is smaller but uh, it should, if it is uh, smaller than the anion uh, then we can uh, say that uh, we, we uh, that the frontal defect may be observed because it is it will be easy for the uh, cation to uh, move towards the in the interstitial space or uh, void. Okay. So this defect lowers the density of the solid as I have discussed. Due to this defect, the atoms or ions can move within the crystal lattice. Correct. Due to this defect, the atoms or ions can move within the crystal lattice. Again, the de it does not def affect the density of the solid. So these are the two differences. Now coming back to our question, which was asked that one of the following statement is incorrect. So option number A, the Frankel defect is a cation vacancy, which is correct because uh, cation is vacant, vacated from its uh, lattice point and our cation interstitial, correct? Frankel defect is a is an anion vacancy. It's totally not correct because anion has a larger size and we have discussed that in Frankel, only cation of smaller size in comparison to anion move towards the interstitial site and a cation interstitial, it is strong. Okay. The density of a solid remains unchanged in case of Frankel defect. This is correct. Density of solid decreases in a case of Scott key defect. This is also correct. So the correct option, uh, wrong, incorrect option is B. Okay. I will highly recommend you to go through NPTEL reference lattice imperfections and crystal by Professor Madhav Ranganathan, Department of Chemistry, IIT Kanpur. The link is given below. Thank you. Yeah. So any doubt if you have, uh, so you can just type ask no thank you okay so thank you for joining yeah i will thank you so much ma'am okay so i will close the session now okay yeah